we go to Wembley Arena, you go to Hammersmith Odeon, and then in 1972, the Brixton Academy was open and Deep Purple played their first show there. They could really play. It was really loud, it was really big, it was really arena rock, it was like cock rock. It was the real deal. Deep Purple were officially the loudest band in the world. And that sort of thing mattered then. Being the loudest was really important. Why loud? You don't want to just hear the music. You want the music to pound you, kick your head in. You play it and, and you think, yeah, it sounds okay, you know? And then you put some volume behind it and it sounds better. Then you put excessive volume behind it, it sounds crazy, you know? Great. <laughs> You never really felt as if you'd had a good night out unless you came back and your eardrums were bleeding. I remember sticking my head in the speakers at a Judas Priest concert. I said, I just, just leave it in there and relax. <laughs> I'm just a tight touch. The rock and roll's supposed to be powerful and noisy. That's the point of it. Just another two or three notches. It's supposed to piss your parents off. You can go up a little bit higher, can't it? I know. If it doesn't do that, then they're the wrong parents. You turned it up. It got on their tits really quickly. OK, we'll try it there. <laughs> Gets you going. It makes your blood pump in your dick hard. And so, if it had to be live and it had to be loud, then it had to be Led Zeppelin, the archetypal heavy rock band. I'd like to introduce Led Zeppelin to you. Well, Led Zeppelin were, were the super band. You had Robert Plant. You had Jimmy Page. You had this drummer that was just devastating. They have the powers of frontman, the ultra-cool lead guitar player, you know, the, the heavy nutcase drummer. They are all the cliches. They were the reality. Originally, they were the reality. They never released a single, they seldom gave interviews, and they rarely appeared on television, but Led Zeppelin were the colossi of hard rock. Part Viking warriors, part psychedelic minstrels, part small armoured infantry division, Led Zeppelin were the ultimate rock and roll band. You never saw Led Zeppelin on top of the pops. They just had the theme tune to the show. You need You talk about rock and roll excess, they did it brilliantly, you know, the, the, the TV's out of the window, the drugs, the money, their own private planes, Led Zeppelin are just out there completely on their own. I used to love the idea that these guys, I mean, you'd see Led Zeppelin, you just know, I mean, Robert Plant's just a guy from Birmingham, isn't he? There he is, getting onto a BAC 111, a private thing, and you know it's got 16 seats, and there was that sort of, what? are they doing in that plane? I mean, they're not sitting there watching a movie, are they? They're just not. They did the sex, they did the drugs, they did the whole nine yards, and they did it spectacularly well. They wrecked hotels all the time, they were mad. In the Holiday Inn, I think, in San Francisco, where they'd been throwing televisions off the, out of the window all day long, as they were checking out, paying for all the damage, the manager of the hotel said, I'd love to do that. So the manager of the band said, well, look, here's $100, have one on us. And as they were getting into their limos, they looked up and there was the manager of the hotel on the roof going, oi! <laughs> Nobody ever told them to do that. They just decided, because they had more money than God, that they could. And this just seemed wonderful to me. Well, ever since I heard the first Led Zeppelin album, I thought them to be really the world's premier rock band. A whole lot of love, ramble on, and particularly stay away to heaven. When not making over the hotels of the world, Led Zeppelin found time to create undisputed classics of the heavy rock genre. Stay with the Heaven was the, it was, it was like the Bible, you know, it was the song, the holy song. And I'm not taking the piss, I'm not even joking. I mean, it was like completely the song. You, no one didn't like Stay with the Heaven. There's a lady who's sure All that glitters is gold and she's buying a stairway to him. 
Robert Plant was 22 when he sang Stairway to Heaven. Page was 26 when he made it. You know, John Bon Jovi could live to be 90. He'll never write Stairway to Heaven. One of the keys to Stairway to Heaven in a lot of Led Zeppelin records was they had a lot of transitions. They start off melodic, then they would get really hard, then they'd come out of that and they transcend through a lot of different changes. The most amazing thing about Stairway to Heaven is trying to guess when the drums come in. And you never ever know when it is. a Led Zepp fan and Led, big Led Zepp fans never listen to Stairway to Heaven because that's the one that everyone, so you wouldn't have thought like, no, I'm, oh, no I don't bother listening to that because I like, you know, Tangerine. I think it's one of the lame tracks. I, I think Rolf Harris did a better fish. <laughs> Bring on the wobble boy, I say, you know. There's a lady who's sure all that glitters is gone and she's buying the Stairway to Heaven. When Rolf Harris did Stairway to Heaven, you know, the, there were howls of protest from people with no sense of humour. If you want a song to remain in its pristine, pure state, the way it was first conceived, then don't publish the bloody thing. It makes us wonder.